Hi everyone, this is Jason here from Nathaniel School of Music. I'm here to introduce you to like the ultimate practice exercise for your five fingers. Five finger exercise. I call it the Swara Challenge and it's basically inspired from Carnatic music. The Swaras we learn to form the respective scales. And there are a lot of ragas but there are 72 uh, seven note ragas or seven note scales called Melakarta ragas which go up in a direction and come down in the same uh, set of with the same set of notes so like that you'll have 72 scales now I'm not going to tell you about the theory of all of that in this video however it's in it's come from there it's, so it comes from a huge family of notes or note combinations or interval permutations or swara combinations if you will and uh, it's ex it's a lot of fun to practice as you may have heard from the uh, introduction performance uh, it's not as you know a normal boring uh, classical exercise so i've tried to make it very interesting to involve all the challenges you might find in terms of the notes and also train your ear okay there'll be a little bit of theory so we'll start with that the theory is just to tell you how i got all these swaras all these notes and um, there'll be my handwritten notes where i've kind of charted out all the permutations for all the scales which you can find and it will be a good road map to form all the the, the the Karnatic Ragas, right? So let I think we should get cracking very soon. Before we do, hit that subscribe button. It will really help our channel grow. It will also help you get notified whenever we release a new lesson uh, or two. And um, hit the like button will be great. Share the video, please. Leave us a comment as always. Let's get cracking, guys. So before we get started with the actual exercise, which you heard in the introduction video, I'm just going to tell you how you can form these intervals or what we call as swaras in Indian music. So the first off, you say the sa or the root. In this case, I'm picking the key of D because well you know me if so some of you at least i'm not a huge c major fan so well d it is for this lesson apologies for it not being c but anyway you have d and also the reason why i tend to take d and other scales is because some of the confusing aspects of music theory which may eventually confuse you happen on scales outside c major you know like double sharp sometimes you know flattening like you'll have something called an f flat and so on which is actually e so these things you encounter when you learn the uh, the non c major scale so that's why i try to insist on that uh, but i'm not a huge fan of c major as well so that's another motivation for me to choose d so i'm taking d so play d with your uh, extreme fingers of both hands, pinky of left and uh, thumb of right, then the A. So the standard objective with this exercise and with swaras and with scale formations in general, you generally need a root and a fifth. That's sa and pa. Okay, so these are your seven note scales. Now, I'm not going to get deep into the theory behind it, but you need a root and a fifth. Then you need a fourth. You could have a perfect fourth, or you could have an augmented fourth, or a sharp four, or a ma, or call this a, a, a tivra ma, or a sharpened one. No, this one. So the exercise is going to keep changing the G, which is the ma, the G sharp, which is the sharp ma. Also, you can call it. Uh, the tritone or the Lydian fourth or the augmented fourth or just the sharp four. These are the available intervals. If you take the four in between the five, you have another one. So we call that the sharp. So coming to the re and the g, because sa is sorted, always D. Pa is sorted, always A. Uh, ma is either going to be G or G sharp. So the other stuff is just going to be in this cluster of four notes. This, 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 this. So uh, the interesting fact about the swara formations or the, 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 the naming conventions for them are that you have three rays and you have three gurs. So I'm going to explain that very, very shortly and you will understand. So 
you the rays are nothing but the minor second or the flat 2 or the major second or the normal 2 or you may you may uh, argue with me and say hey is this not the minor third or the flat 3 well you could say that but you could also say that this is an augmented second so an augmented second will be followed by only one kind of third the major third so this could make a nice uh, set of three notes if you add that with a pa maybe a ma oh you see what's happening there we've we are kind of treating this f well not f anymore now we'll have to call it as e sharp that would make it an augmented second we are kind of making it feel like a second even though it's not really a second which we learn in the conventional textbooks right so that's why i like the whole idea of the swara formations in uh, in carnatic music you have three rays again flat 2 major 2 sharp 2 okay or minor second officially major second officially augmented second officially or r1 r2 r3 in the ray 1 ray 2 ray 3 uh, language now if you look at the gurs the gurs actually start from believe it or not well i from here okay so why is this a gur because this would function as a third or a gur gur means 3 re means 2 sa means 1 ma means 4 pa means 5 etc this functions as a 3 when you already have a flat 2 which is in between that 3 so very exotic now you can combine this re and this ga this cluster with a whichever ma this ma normal as i told you g or g sharp create some really really interesting flavors so that's why we need to include this third as well and again in western music theory the third is there it's called as the diminished third how do we call this it's basically we are supposed to call this as not e unfortunately we have to call this as f flat okay as weird as that sounds to some of you the theory behind it is please call it f flat okay so you have the diminished third diminished third can also be formed by flattening the major twice so that will be the minor third which is f then you have the major third which is f sharp so what are the three gurs or the three uh, thirds diminished third minor third major third so that's sa ga sa ga sa ga these are all your gurs or thirds now coming to the re you can now connect the re and the third in how many permutations for that this needs to start becoming a maths class which unfortunately i'm not very qualified to do but i will be certain to tell you that there are six combinations between the re and the ga because there are three rays there are three gurs there are repetitions between them right because the second re see the first re is unique which is the minor second the second ray is the same as the um, uh, the first ga isn't it or the diminished third so a diminished third is the same as a major second so we can't really use both of them together similarly the third ray which is the augmented second is same as the minor third as you may already see from this f being the minor third you call it f and then you need to call this e sharp in order to call it as the augmented second okay the theory is also something i'm trying to share with you guys because uh, the exercise is rather simple it's not there's not rocket science behind what i played it's just around this theory okay so three rays 
three girls and then you interact with them the rays and the girls you get six permutations and um, well you also have the two mars to deal with so how it works is six ray and ga combinations mixed with either one of the mars so what is six twos are 12 and this has become a maths class all of a sudden i i apologize for that so you have 12 permutations now to deal with keeping the sa and the pa consistent so what do you do with these 12 permutations you do them all in a nice circular repetitive motion uh, with a nice five finger drill so the drill is sa re ga ma pa ma ga re sa just one two three four five four three two one now you may be asking what about the sixth and the seventh those will be coming up very shortly in in our subsequent lesson so for now this lesson is just one two three four five sa re ga ma pa so what you need to do is do 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 sa re ga ma pa ma ga re sa but not with only those major permutations which are these this is what we do every day so instead of that what you could now start doing is start with r1 and g1 there we go now you could do r1 g2 r1 and g3 this is like a very arabic sound this is a very again arabic anything with a flat 2 is very arabic or middle eastern you could say but when you add a flat 2 and a flat 3 you could also argue it's a bit spanish i like that so again with r1 merged with all the gurs and the same ma which is g normal g that one ga2 ga3 now you can move the ray to e and now you have only two gurs this one or that one basically minor scale minor third major scale major third so moving forward you have the next ray which is the augmented second or f and now you have this cluster so you have two clusters uh, in the first six uh, exercises when you combine the r1 and uh, g1 like that and then when you combine the r2 with the g3 so this is a good workout for your fingers your fingers are moving all over the place and you need your wrist to support it as well so it's a good grip exercise a good note awareness exercise a good ear training exercise for the piano and the exercise can just be up and down for now then you can have your fun so all the permutations the first six with the normal ma again r1 g1 with normal 4 r1 g2 now R1 G3 Now R2 with the G2 because you don't have a G1 R2 with um, the last ga or G3 also major third then R3 augmented second with a major third because you can't do the other gas Now all of this stuff needs to be practiced with the the sharp four as well so then you have the same story r1 g1 with the sharp four that creates a really cool vibe then minor third ga2 major third ga3 now r2 with a g2 but with that sharp that then there we go you 
you have all the six permutations around the sharp four. So six with the normal four, six with the sharp four, and the challenge would actually be if you can do all the twelve together, and uh, also send it to us. You can tag me on Instagram at Jason Zach, or you can tag Nathaniel School at Nathaniel School, and uh, you could actually record yourself playing this challenge or this exercise. Send it to us if you want to do something interesting with it. Well, one option could be to just kind of play them together. <laughs> You could also play some chords. See if you can con construct some chords around each um, uh, scale or each raga. Uh, the other thing is you could groove in the left hand. Kind of let your left left hand loose and try to create a nice drum groove on the left hand. So these are just some things which can make it interesting. Uh, you could even realign the notes of your right hand if you like to play something. Same fingers but in thirds or maybe in groups of three. Or together, uh, playing the notes together. I've made sure I've um, notated all of these things and written it down in the Patreon uh, sec sector. So you can head over there, get notes for this whole thing, the definitions for everything, the names of the notes in the Indian language and in the Western language, and. Uh, uh, for my personal growth as a musician, this has really helped because, uh, you know, there are so many ways of learning music and when the theory behind what you're trying to do is airtight, it doesn't matter what kind of theory you're learning, whether you want to call it Indian, Carnatic, Hindustani, Western, Eastern. If, you're, if your theory is airtight, if you understand the sound, the logic, the maths behind it, I mean, it doesn't matter what you want to call. You want to call it Do, Re, Mi, Fa, So, Sa, Re, Ga, Ma, Pa. How does that matter? Do, Re, Mi, Fa, So, Sa, Re, Ga, Ma, Pa. Primarily, I think for singing, to make it easy on the voice, right? So, well, that's about it. So, I hope it will train your ear. It should train your ear. It should. It's a great finger exercise because, as I said, the fingers go in all sorts of uh, rather random directions and pretty much every single direction there are 12 like, permutations right uh, your rhythm will also be tested your theory will be tested a lot of things will be tested again this is jason here from nathaniel school of music thanks a ton for watching this lesson do consider hitting that subscribe button hitting that bell icon for regular notifications you can follow us on instagram you can also join our mailing list on our website where we send you regular updates uh, you will also have our courses listed there on our website nathanielschool.com we have virtual courses we also have video courses also if you'd like to support our channel you can do so by hitting that join button that will mean a lot you can also support us on patreon and by supporting us you'll get more video learnings you'll get more you'll get my handwritten notes 